And now it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Mike Vincent. And now taking a look at Brock Iron Fist, um, and he is unique, so you can only have one copy of this guy out um, at a time, and that's fine because there's only one copy of him in the core set. So he is very expensive in that he costs six resources, but he has two willpower, two attack, one defense, and four hit points. He is a dwarf and a warrior, and his card reads response, after a dwarf hero you control leaves play, put Brock Iron Fist into play from your hand. So Brock Iron Fist is a good card in the right situation. Um, I think for a cost of six, it might be a lot to ask to pay six resources for this ally, given that perhaps there's better ones um, for their cost, for example, Faramir. But if you know you're going to be in a combat heavy quest and you have a dwarf hero or a multitude of dwarf heroes, then he's probably worth including because you can play him for free if something happens to one of your dwarves. Um, if you consider dwarves like Gimli and Glowin, both are damage sponges and are going to be taking a lot of attacks. It's possible if you draw the wrong shadow card that they might end up taking more damage than you anticipated and might end up dying. So it's nice to have Brock Iron Fist as a backup and that he can come in. He has pretty respectable stats and certainly is a decent defender with one defense and four hit points. So if you can, I would try to figure out a way to get Brock Iron Fist into play for free um, and perhaps as the game goes on, um, you can find ways to lose a hero and then bring them back into your hand for free, but we'll talk about that later. Brock Iron Fist. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at the attachments for the leadership sphere, and here we see Celebrian Stone. Uh, it is also unique, so again, you can only have one copy of this, and it has a cost of two. Um, it is an artifact and an item, and it reads, attached to a hero, restricted. Attached hero gains plus two willpower, if attached hero is Aragorn, he also gains a spirit resource icon. So this is an excellent attachment, especially if you're going to be using Aragorn in your party. Um, we mentioned earlier that with Aragorn, you want to get him questing every turn and then you can free him up. So if you're playing Aragorn and you attach Celebrian Stone, this is going to allow him to quest for four willpower every turn and then if you have a resource, he can then attack and defend. And this also gives him the spirit resource icon, which would make him both a purple hero and a blue hero. So if you're playing a spirit leadership deck, then this is a perfect card to bring along because it's gonna allow you to spend Aragorn's resources on both uh, leadership cards and spirit cards. Now, if you can't bring, bring Aragorn, then another logical hero to play this with is Theodred. So as we mentioned before with him, his whole ability revolves around him committing to the quest every turn. So if you commit him to the quest, he's gonna give another hero a resource. Now, the one weakness I feel with Theodred is that he only has one willpower, but if you can attach the Celebrian Stone to him, then he's gonna be uh, committing to the quest every turn. He'll be committing three willpower instead of one, and you'll still be able to give that resource to another hero each turn. So I would say both Aragorn and Theodred are perfect candidates uh, for the Celebrian Stone, a fantastic attachment, um, and one worth including in a leadership deck. So I don't think this is a controversial statement, but in my opinion, the Steward of Gondor is one of the best cards in this game. Um, I always include this card, and if I'm playing the Leadership Sphere in any capacity, uh, I will be including this card in my deck. Uh, Steward of Gondor, it's unique, so you can only have one on the table at a time, and it has a cost of two. It says Gondor and title. Attached to a hero, attached hero gains the Gondor trait. Action, exhaust Steward of Gondor to add two resources to attached hero's resource pool. So this card is absolutely fantastic. Um, it pays for itself the turn that you bring it out. So if you attach this for a cost of two, well then you can exhaust it and get your two resources back. And being able to generate five resources in a turn is excellent. Um, this is gonna make some of those more expensive allies um, affordable and it's just such a great card considering that is essentially free. Um, now keep in mind with the Gondor trait, um, and as I mentioned in future expansions, the Gondor synergies will start to emerge, and so this will also allow you to turn any hero uh, into a Gondor hero. So if there's a certain hero who you want to be buffed by um, 
Gondor cards, then you can play the Steward of Gondor on that hero. They will then have the Gondor trait and will receive any benefits that go to a character with the Gondor trait. So being able to give a hero um, the Gondor trait and generating two resources every turn makes this an absolutely fantastic card um, and I think one of the best in the game. Now finally turning our attention to the event cards for the Leadership Sphere. Here we see Ever Vigilant. Uh, it has a cost of one and reads action, choose and ready one ally card. So this deck, or sorry, this card is really going to depend on which allies you are including. If you have an ally with an invaluable ability um, or with amazing well-rounded statistics, then perhaps this is a good card to bring. And I think one card who you may want to consider playing this with is... So Gandalf, he is a neutral ally, and I'll spend more time talking about him when we get around to the neutral cards, but this is a clear candidate um, for Ever Vigilant. So if you have Gandalf, um, you can see he has a willpower of four. So with Ever Vigilant, you can quest with Gandalf and make great progress with four willpower, but then you could ready him and use his attacking or his defending to deal with any nasty enemies you may have encountered this round. So yeah, I think Ever Vigilant is a good card provided you have the correct or the right ally to play. Okay, we have another event card called Grim Resolve. It has a cost of five, so it's very expensive, but when you read the ability, you can see why. It reads, action, ready all characters in play. Not just characters you control, characters in play. So this is an amazing card. Um, yes, it's a bit prohibitive in that it costs five resources, but as we've mentioned many times this video, um, the Leadership Sphere is very good at generating resources, so you want to use this at the right moment, but if you need to really quest hard to make it through a certain um, encounter or active location, this will allow you to essentially commit every character on the table to play, and then, um, sorry, to the quest, and then you can play this card and you and your partner can free up any allies, sorry, any characters, um, to deal with any enemies uh, for attacking or defending. So this could save you and could be a game winner for you uh, if used correctly in the right situation. So as long as you can pay for it, Grim, Grim Resolve is an absolutely amazing card. So I'm realizing card. now I'm maybe doing a horrible job at telling you how many copies of each card there are, um, but this one has two copies, Common Cause. Um, it has a cost of zero and reads action, exhaust one hero you control to choose and ready a different hero. So again, um, this card is going to depend on what your deck looks like and what heroes you've included. To be honest, I don't really play this card. I don't really like this card. Um, yes, I can see scenarios where this would come in handy, but considering I like to keep my decks as small as possible, this just isn't a card I feel will get enough use um, to make it worthwhile. Um, so please, if you use this card and you feel like I'm missing something here, please let me know in the comments because... I could see situations where this could have a lot of use. It's just not a card that I tend to include in my decks and haven't played around with very much. Um, exhaust one hero you control to choose and ready a different hero. Yeah, I think it just depends on what heroes you have and what their abilities are, and um, I haven't experimented with this. So please, I'll ask you guys, if you're watching, if you know a good hero combination uh, that you've used this card for quite a bit, please let me know in the comments, and um, yeah, I'd be grateful to hear what you think. So there's Common So here cause. we're looking at For Gondor. Uh, it has two costs and reads action. Until the end of the phase, all characters get plus one attack and all Gondor characters also get plus one defense until the end of the phase. So this card could certainly come in handy if you have a lot of um, enemies to engage this turn. And if you really need to finish some of these enemies off and kill them, it can come in handy. Or if you need to do some blocking um, and some defending, then it could also come in handy. Now this is a card that could combo well with Steward of Gondor in that you can give any hero or ally, um, sorry, hero, um, the Gondor trait, and then they would also be buffed by a card like for Gondor. So if you're playing a multi-sphere deck and you have a hero who doesn't have the Gondor trait, or if you're working with any heroes that don't have the Gondor trait, then you can play this on them and you can give them plus one attack and also plus one defense. So if you've bought some of the expansions uh, of future packs and have enough cards to make a Gondor deck, I think for Gondor would be um, an easy card, a recommendation, I guess, to put in a Gondor deck. Um, I might not include this card otherwise, 
um, unless I really wanted to do a lot of attacking, but I think this would be a good inclusion for a Gondor deck. Okay, here we see Valiant Sacrifice. It has a cost of one and reads response. After an ally card leaves play, that card's controller draws two cards. Um, this card is all right. It's not normally one that I would include in my decks, but it is always good to have a few cards in your deck that give you extra card draw. So depending on what your deck looks like uh, and what encounter you're up against, if you know you're going to have lots of chump blockers and there's going to be lots of enemies and they're going to be dying, then this might be a good one because you're going to have characters leaving play. Or if you have lots of copies of Gandalf in your hand, um, he's going to be leaving play as well when you're finished with him. Or if you have eagles and you're playing some sort of tactics uh, leadership deck, um, some of the mechanics around the eagles have them leaving play. So in those examples, um, you might want to include Valiant Sacrifice so you can get some extra cards. Um, however, I do think that once more expansions come out, uh, there are better cards for getting extra card draw than this one. All right, and last but certainly not least is Sneak Attack. There are two copies of this in the core set, and it has a cost of one and reads action. Put one ally card into play from your hand. At the end of the phase, if that ally is still in play, return it to your hand. So Sneak Attack is an excellent card. Uh, we talked last time in the tactics video about how this could be used with Bayorn, um, but another clear candidate for this card is Sneak Attack Gandalf. Um, yes, given that Gandalf has a cost of five, it can be difficult to get him onto the board um, if you need him. So having uh, Sneak Attack available um, with a cost of one makes Gandalf suddenly a lot cheaper to play. So a couple good things about this. Um, so this is going to trigger Gandalf's ability response after Gandalf enters play, choose one, draw three cards, deal four damage to one enemy in play, or reduce your threat by five. So one beautiful thing about Sneak Attack is it allows you to play Gandalf, reap this amazing effect, use him to either quest or attack and defend, and then you get to put him back into your hand for later, and it only costs you one resource. So this allows you to play Gandalf multiple times, um, in that you can get lots of card draw, deal lots of damage, uh, reduce your threat, or a combination of those, um, especially as there's two copies of Sneak Attack in this game. So one thing to keep in mind, as I was playing the game wrong when I first started, is it does say, put one ally card into play from your hand at the end of the phase, keyword phase, if that ally is still in play, return it to your hand. So what this means is that you cannot bring out Gandalf and then quest with him um, and then have him stick around during the attacking phase, uh, the combat phase, sorry. So you have to either bring out Gandalf to quest or you can bring him out to uh, do combat, but he cannot do both with sneak attack as he only comes out for one phase. So sneak attack Gandalf, in my opinion, is one of the best combinations in the core set and it's still probably one of the better combos in the game, um, or certainly a very good combo in this game. So Sneak Attack, an amazing card. So there you have it. Um, that concludes our look at the Leadership Sphere uh, for the core set. I do think it's uh, one of the better spheres. I like playing leadership decks. Um, I find the ability to resource, um, sorry, to generate resources comes in very handy, and I like that they're a bit more balanced. Um, they have some ability to attack and defend, but they're also very good at questing. Um, so I would say if you're playing a solo deck with the core set, um, that leadership might be a good sphere to go with because it is so well-rounded. Um, it also has readying effects, which is going to let you use your heroes or your allies multiple times, and it's going to allow you to generate the resources you need um, to buy the more expensive allies because um, some of the cards are more costly in this case. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video and stay tuned next week when we're going to take a look at the spirit cards. Um, one final note is that I don't claim to be an expert in this game. Yes, I've played it a lot and I have a lot of passion for it, but there certainly could be things that I've missed and there certainly could be cards that I don't find useful, but perhaps you've noticed and you found clever ways to play them. So please, in the comments, leave any suggestions of how you play with these cards, and let me know if you feel that I've missed any key combos or ways to play a card. So yeah, thanks very much. Uh, have a great week, and we'll see you next time when we look at the Spirit Sphere. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices.
cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Boom, boom, boom.